I'm really inclined to think that this could be a one of one 70 Hemi Cuda. I gotta be honest, I, it's the first time I'm noticing that the wings are even different. Totally different. I had no idea you had a cousin with a 70 Hemi Cuda. Do you know how rare that is, Bob? So this is a 428 Super Cobra Jet. And this is just a Hemi I had up in the barn. Yeah, just a Hemi you had in the barn. Now, i am you don't even have to be a, a, a knowledgeable car guy <laughs> to know what we're looking at here with two wing cars underneath covers. So this is a four-cylinder engine, and this is a four-cylinder engine. The crankcase has been cut at a 45 degree angle, so it's a V8, 1946, 2010 Shizuki, 600, four cylinder, four stroke, dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. And you made this? I made it. And wow. I'll tell everybody this story. I bought my Hemi Cuda in 73, I bought this in 74, I bought the Daytona in 75. Between, wow. between the three cars, I don't have $6,000 invested. Wow. Okay? Wow. Say that again. So I paid $700 for this car. One of the things I tell my daughter all the time on our channel is if somebody else can do it, <laughs> there's probably no good reason that we can't learn how to do it. But I'm sitting here today going, there's probably a pretty good reason I can't learn to do that. <laughs> Welcome back to Crossroad Garage and Salvage. A little bit different week for us this week. Caitlin's not in this episode. That's my 15-year-old daughter who's normally working with me in the garage here. But she's not here this week. And actually, I'm not here this week. I mean, obviously, I'm here now. But for the last two weeks, we haven't been working in the garage because I've been traveling for work. Last episode, we pulled Caitlin's flathead out of her 41 Ford, disassembled it. That's what you see parts of in front of you here that I'm cleaning up with our Get Gone degreaser from Sweet Patina. Many of you who watch the channel already know that my full-time job is as a Baptist minister. I work with a mission agency that serves churches and missionaries around the globe. And it was part of the travel that I was doing for work about a month ago that put me in a position that I never imagined I would be in. Walking into a barn full of cars, actually multiple barns full of cars. Honestly, I didn't actually know what I was walking into. A guy in the church that I was serving in that week said to me over dinner, I've got a cousin with a collection of funny cars that you would like to see. I agreed to go see him because I thought I was about to go see a collection of old drag cars, funny cars. No, it turns out the Plymouth Superbird and Dodge Daytona just looked funny to him. Six figure wing cars were the funny cars. We started seeing some of the cars in the collection and I just had to stop and say, I I've got a YouTube channel. I think there are other people who would love to see this content. Do you mind if I take some photos and video? Jerry, the owner of this collection, was very, very gracious, more than happy to show them off to me and to you. I started editing, I had two hours of footage. So guys, there's a lot of cars you might see in the background, you see underneath covers that don't get shown. It's not because they're not worth showing. There are just so many I had to pick and choose what I think are the most interesting and the best of the collection to show you. Some of the most desirable muscle cars on the planet he has in there, including a 70 Hemi Cuda. With so many options on it, it's got two fender tags. Stick around to the end of this video, because at the end, I'm gonna go through the options list on, that, on those fender tags. I didn't know they were there when I walked into the barn, and I was just thrilled to be able to see them. So I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. So this what is, is this? This is out of a tank. A 1955 <laughs> M56 Scorpion tank made by Cadillac. Continental engine. It's actually it's actually an airplane engine, what, what I'm finding out. Yeah, so it's designed to be air-cooled then? Yes, it is. Is it going back in a tank? No, I don't have the tank. No, it's, this has been sitting 20 years. Oh. You know a lot about engines? I mean, hey. enough to, to be uh, dangerous at times. The crankshaft is hollow. You can see all the way through it. Really? Yeah. Because it's an airplane engine? I guess to lighten it up, I don't get it. Okay, if you look at there, it's got all them. Yeah. They, they feed the mains with a little tube to the rods. Wow. They should have two lobes per cylinder on the camshaft. Right. That would be 12 lobes. Right. But there's only nine lobes on this camshaft. The one lobe works that intake valve and this intake valve. One really? Lobe. Yeah, you can see it right here on this one here. Huh, that is slick. This is where the big, huge fan run 
come out through here. I don't know some of the stuff here. What do you think you're going to do with it? What are you going to put on it? I'm going to put it in a trailer and start it up. Okay. So this is this is Jerry's garage here. Yeah, what do you got here? I've had this car for 51 years. It's a 70 Hemi Cuda. Wow. Jerry, I had no idea. It's got 20,000 miles on it. <laughs> Plot twist. No. <laughs> Leather interior, California emissions. Holy smokes. Look at that breather. <laughs> <laughs> it shakes. It shakes. See, it's attached to What's that? Why called the shaker? It's called, yeah, it's a shaker hood. Shaker but... hood. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you the original owner on I this? Am not. So you said 50, One year. 51 years. So I you. 73. Yeah, you bought it when it was cheap, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Can I get inside? Yeah. It's got an overhead console in it, it's got leather interior. So the overhead console on these, is that where they have the little the lights for like your seatbelt and that, that's all up there? Huh? That was a special option, wasn't it? Because of the leather. Yes, he does. Actually, guys, I don't know that much about lots of cars, including Mopars. But that was literally like a Slumdog Millionaire moment. I happened to be watching Graveyard Cars the night before I went out there and saw this collection of cars. And if I hadn't been watching that on the TV at the hotel the night before, I would have never known that there was such a thing as an overhead console option that came with the leather interior package. You know what you know when you know it. You don't always have to tell people why you know it. Just know it, you know. Unbelievable. <laughs> So, so I'm looking at it. it. Has the has the hood been painted or the whole car's been repainted? The whole car's been repainted. It's wrecked a little bit. But it's got a rear winter defroster in it. The California emissions is completely all different. Yeah. Because it was sold brand new in California. And the mirrors is an option. The rubber bumpers is an option. Was it wrecked long enough ago that it's still got a clean title? Yes. It yeah. Was, I don't think it was. I don't think it was salvage title. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. This is the the original interior, or is this redone? You said it had been painted, but is this the original top this too? Is the original top. And there's just like there's no rust, there's no rot and bubbling. It's been inside. Here's an original sales brochure for this car. <laughs> here's, a, here's a reproduction of the window. Stick. I mean, yours is right on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you got the blackout yeah, blackout shaker. I, I, I've asked several people about the shade of them, and they nobody can give me a straight answer. It, they should be gray. They should be body color. They should be black. They they can't give me a straight answer on it. So, so are these reproductions they are or reproductions. these reproductions? For... Yes. I've had them for 30, 40 years, and I really don't remember where I got them. I think you can get them. You get them on a the website. They will they will send. Them. Well, I know I know for like. Fords and stuff, you know, I you can get like Marty report. reports and I all that Marty stuff. Yeah. For my Mercury down there. Did the Hemi Cudas come with a manual trans? Or are they all automatic? No, they get them either way. You could get them either way. Yep. Four speeds were pretty common with the Chrysler product, no matter what kind of vehicle it was. It was pretty common. Bob's Bob said to me. I've got a cousin with some cars. I had no idea you had a cousin with a 70 Hemi Cuda. Do you know how rare that is, Bob? No, I have no idea. I'm just here to bring you along and look at this. It's Unbelievable. all over my head. That's great. You don't even have to be a, a, a knowledgeable car guy <laughs> to, to know what we're looking at here with two wing cars underneath covers so is, is one a dodge and one's a plymouth or oh man <laughs> these five cars were only built for one reason they had to sell so many to the general public right before nascar would let them race and plus the, the, i have a pontiac down here also oh my. now in order to be in this club you had to have one of these cars the wing warrior club yeah i bought one of each to be in a car club you mean correct a local car club or a national club national, national car club well let's see them <laughs> I got. I got to be. I got to be honest with you. 
I didn't notice either of these. And I looked up and I went, is that a wing? Is that a wing next to it? <laughs> oh, man. Original paint. No. No? No. Wow. I painted in 75. Well, hey, that's close enough to new that hardly counts. You know, I've always found it interesting when you, when you, when you deal with old cars like this, you find cars that were painted like three or four years after they were built. And you're like, what were people doing that? They, they just want to change color and stuff on them. Well, this this will start run and drive license on most of these i think there's 15 cars in here that i got license on man Home insurance man has the motor ever been out of that or is yes, that I rebuilt it. you rebuilt it is it numbers matching on this, this one? one is not okay wow you guys are going to hear the same words keep falling out of my mouth on this episode and that is the word wow now you gotta understand something I've been all over the world. This episode is publishing because for the last two weeks I've been in South Central Asia. I've been to nine county fairs and at least a half dozen chili cook-offs, but I have never seen anything like Jerry's collection of cars. This is a Daytona, okay? Right. So, so uh, Roadrunner, Dodge, Pl Plymouth Roadrunner, Dodge Daytona. Right. And wow. I'll tell everybody this story. I bought my Hemi Cuda in 73. I bought this in 74. I bought the Daytona in 75. Between, wow. between the three cars, I don't have $6,000 invested. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Jerry, have you, have you got any kids? I have two kids. I have two grandkids, yeah. I, you want him to adopt you? I mean, I'm not looking to change parentage or anything, but. <laughs> yeah, so this has a six barrel on it. It has three two barrels. Yeah, 446 barrel. Yeah. Wow. Those back windows, I'm, I'm looking at them. They're not even the same. Like they're not even the same pitch. Nope, not even close. But they had these. The way windows. the way that comes down to the trunk and the way this meets the trunk are just yeah, totally they, different. They give it an egg shape. Yeah. But they were all put in wind tunnels. It, it's all very functional. Of course, you got to go 200 mile an hour. You know, very I got to be. I got to be honest. I, it's the first time I'm noticing that the wings are even different. Totally different. But not that I've ever spent a lot of time around either of it's them, but. All done with aerodynamics it's all functional now i don't know if you know about these those are functional vents for the but they're they're actually for well, aero right they're not for what i was told heat. was on a race car these are real wide uh -huh. going down the track the tires will be up in the fenders to get the nose down on the ground right and they do have holes in them yeah they do have holes but it's for the it's for the wheel to actually come up correct when they turn corner Fifty-one thousand. I paid seven hundred dollars for this. Say that again. So I paid seven hundred dollars for this car. Oh, seven hundred bucks for a Plymouth yeah. Superbird. Yeah. I just I just ran my clutch for the first time on a Plymouth Superbird. There you go. Uh, Pistol now, grip shifter. How did Mark Warren say that? First gear is in the in the attic, and second gear is in the basement. <laughs> Yeah, shift that thing. It, it's, it's real long. Yeah. You're not kidding. Yeah. I've got... So that's first, second, third, fourth. I've got a five-speed in my Cummins. And um, I've got the the shifter extended. So it comes up way above the, wind, the, the uh, dash. And with it extended that far to shift into fifth gear, I, I joke about having to throw it over into fifth and let go of it because <laughs> you can't get there otherwise. So these sat in the shed. I don't think I got this on camera earlier. They sat in the shed for 30 years. Yeah, at least, yes. And these 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 two looked kind of like that this one. Correct. Same yes. kind of dirt-covered appearance. Yes. So you take these to shows, do you trailer them or do you drive, drive them? If, it, if it's within like 50, 60 miles, I drive it. Wow. I, I drive this car everywhere. It's got 276 gears in it. And my wife loves to drive that car. I bet. She gets ways and honks and I put the 43s on the side and, and uh, it, it, it just floats. It, it's just a floater. 
It gets a good gas mileage of that 2, 276. This is a different store. This has got the 446 barrel, four speed. It's got a 60 series Dana with four mm -hmm. 10s in it. So mm -hmm. kind of two different cars. Yeah, very different driving yeah. experience, I imagine. What are the CC Nationals? Carcraft, Street Machine Nationals. Carcraft Nationals. Yeah, you can see where I've been to several. This one, this one goes back to 1984. <laughs> you thought you'd come down here just to preach, huh? I did. Make a sermon about all this. There's got to be a sermon illustration in some of this somewhere. <laughs> hot, hot deception. I'll show you Guys, some of this decep deception. Unbelievable. Okay? When we get down here at the other end. So this is, raise that up again, because that's, is that, that's, that is a 440. Correct. Superbird would have came with three different engines, a 440, four barrel, six pack, and a Hemi. The, a Hemi Daytona is worth millions. They only made 50 of them. Right. With millions. Yeah. These are still six figure cars. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a 69 Charger 500, which was an amalgamation build as well, Correct. right? You see the grill is flush. It's not in Well, so when you step down here and you said, somebody know what all the rest of these are, I looked at the grills and I went, none of those look like... Production cars. Right. That's out of a Cornet. The, huh. the headlights are not recessed in here. Yeah, and yeah. If you look at the back window, it's just like the Daytona. It's what they call a So it's a, fl it's a flush mount? Yes. It's not recessed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just like this one. They only made 500 of these. Jerry, do you not own a pressure washer? Or? Well, I'll use a little patina. <laughs> no, these came from the other barn. And I I'm, I'm, uh, I'm joking because this is exactly the way you want to see them, actually. <laughs> you need to call the fire department out here. <laughs> wow. So, what's the plans for this one? I, I don't know. It's sad. The people do not know what these are. Right. You know, and they're not worth a ton of money. If it had a Hemi in it, that's fine. It's just got a 440. Yeah, well, just a 440, you know, um, no big deal. Man, I think I'm going to have to get myself a pack of TKO hand wipes from Sweet Patina to keep my TKO hand wipe pack from Sweet Patina clean. I, I just want to say something here before we go too much further, guys. I need you to understand this isn't me claiming to have found these cars. The truth is, none of these cars were lost. Jerry knew where they were the whole time. Now, most of them, including the Hemi Cuda, the Superbird, the Daytona, they sat in either a barn or a trailer for over 30 years. Uh, and a few years ago, six, seven years ago, a, a guy named Ryan Brunt, the auto archeologist, actually documented most of these cars in some videos and photos that he posted online. And that was actually the thing that motivated Jerry to get these cars out of the barn uncovered, get the dust off of them, rebuild some of the mechanicals, and get these things back on the road so that he and others can enjoy them. These cars are not unknown. Jerry drives a lot of them to a lot of car shows. The Hemi Cuda has been recognized at national car shows for what it is. So I'm not out here like the Richard Rawlings wannabe telling you about this awesome collection of cars that I found out in the middle of nowhere. They were never lost. Uh, he knows what he has, and he knows what he should do with these cars. And he's doing it, he's making it work. And he deserves a lot of credit for holding on to these cars as long as he has, and doing with them what he's doing now. So, back to the episode, enjoy. And don't forget to check out sweetpatina.com. Grab yourself some products that you know you're gonna use in the garage. So you said there's one, two, three, four. What's the fifth one here? What's this one under the cover? This is the Mercury. You and this, this is the he, Talladega. Oh, so this is a Mercury Cyclone, Cyclone right. Here, here, there's, there's the real car. Kale Yarborough. Did I say that right? Yarborough? 
My mother's from North Carolina. She'd be proud. So if you look right here, and you look oh right yeah, there, that good factory body, factory bodywork. Huh? Run these cars down the assembly line. They get a saw and they saw it off. They saw the front end off right there. Wow. Put this nose on there. This this grills they're out of the LTDs. Uh huh. The front bumper is two rear bumpers welded together. The things they did just to go racing. Yeah. So yeah. 351 Cleveland in it. Four barrel. This has a four Why four. did it you need to make a longer nose on it? They wanted to slide it down. Okay. See, these cars are really supposed to be out here like this. See? Aero. Aerodynamics. Yeah. Yep. So this has a 428 Super Cobra jet. I think they oh, wow. Put in these on Mustangs right there. It has a factory oil cooler on it. Wow. That's, that's wild. <laughs> so this is one or 500, this is like 600 and 600. Okay. So you got a few Anglias back here, or what do you, what do you got? That, that is a Fiat. Okay. This is a Morris Minor. Let me show you this. I have six Yugos. So this is a Nash Metropolitan and four Yugos. My Daytona set right here for 35 years. My Hemi Cuda sat right there for 35 years on my Aspen. They were, that was the three cars that were in here. Wow. Okay. You know I almost bought a Yugo recently. My wife found it on Marketplace, and she said, you need to buy this for me because it's a cute little car. And I said, you don't want a Yugo. But you got to understand, the paint, the brakes, the engine trim, it's all Fiat. Oh, really? I, Fiat. That I didn't know. It's all Fiat. Okay. I did a little work with this one, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is, I actually I don't see the difference between this and the factory setup. What um, is this a Yugoslavian thing where they put the spark plugs through the head? Is that okay? I like must be one. Okay, this is plastic. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so is this a is this a, a mock up? It's a piece of plastic weighs thirty pounds. <laughs> now I have a electric motor up in the bell housing. It turns this. That is really now, this cool. This stuff is real. This no, yeah, real. I can see all the accessories yeah. and everything are real. These are actually extension cords. These are grease gun hoses. I found this piece right here <laughs> over in the barn, and it's off of a planter. Okay? I put two distributors in. So it's still running on a factory, factory motor. 1.1. 1. 1. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I got to be honest with you. That's a little disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they put the spare tire there, and they put the air conditioner and heater here, and I took all that stuff out of there. So. Guys, if you like what we're doing here, you're enjoying this video so far, would you do us a favor, hit that like button, and then subscribe. Also, make sure to head over to CrossroadGarage.com. Grab yourself some merchandise, hats, shirts, T-shirts, sweatshirts. All of the proceeds from the merchandise sales go to support Caitlin and her effort to rebuild her 1941 pickup as her first vehicle, which we're doing here on the channel. Enjoy. So Dodge Aspen. 1978. And I'm seeing a dealer tag in the window here. That is correct. But wh where did the numbers come from? Did that come from the dealer? It did. Really? From the factory. Back in 1977, 78, you could buy a race car from Chrysler. Wow. They called it a kit car. This is all, this has never been uh, dealer prepped? It was. They didn't take, they didn't take them off. <laughs> Base price of the car is $3,700. The options are five thousand. <laughs> I ordered this brand new. Oh, so you you bought this brand I, new? I ordered it. How many do they make? One hundred and forty-five. And I mean, it's got it's got window straps and everything. Front and rear got adjustable spoiler, chin spoiler, I guess, and the numbers, two tone paint. Wow. <laughs> Seven miles on it. Seven miles. Does it still smell like a new car? It actually does smell like a new car still. It's got cruise control, positive traction, uh, power windows, power door locks, 40 channel CD. Wow. So 3,700 base price and $5,000 in options, huh? <laughs> You're my kind of guy, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Morris Minor quarter ton panel truck. I made all of that. And then hand turn. You put the battery in there and had a narrow differential. Four wheel power disc brakes. This car's made in England. Right. I put an English Chevrolet in it. You know what a Cosworth Vega? Cosworth Vega, yep. Okay. I have I have three of these engines. I have the whole car. Cosworth Vega. So this is the car that the motor in the other barn came out of or yes. 
had a spun rod in it. The engine was out when I bought the car. But this is made in England. These I had made. That's a factory stainless steel header. Yep. And I made all that back in there. So the Cosworth Vega motors, are, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're like the performance. It's only 100 horsepower. But it's still like a performance setup. In 1975. In, in England. Yes. Cosworth yeah. is, is huge in racing. Dual overhead cam, four miles per second. And you pieced all this together, I'm yeah. seeing. So was this a factory panel? It was, but apparently it was two different trucks. Okay. The, actually, the front end is just a car. Right, the front right. Front a four-door car. I bought this out of salvage, I believe it or not. Really? Yeah. And I guess it's two different cars. But this this is made for this because these two pieces bolt together. Huh. So there's 30 bolts glue across there. Wow. I pulled this behind my Superbird. It's got a trailer hitch on it. All these run except that one. It's been it's been cut apart. That's a is that a factory cutaway or something you did? You know I don't know. A guy gave it to me. <clears throat> this is a Crosley engine. Okay. This is aluminum. This is sheet metal. Okay. The cylinders and the cylinder head. Cylinder head does not come off. Okay. 135 pieces of sheet metal soldered together. Really? It weighs 11 pounds when it's bare. Wow. That's how they made them. Now they found out that they all leaked. Is this the counterpart? Is this? It is. This is a cast iron one. Okay. It's all stock. But I took two of those and put two of them together. Now I have a flat eight. Oh, man. And it runs. Like a sewing machine, I bet, then right? I put two together and have a V8. <laughs> <laughs> That's two four-cylinder engines. That is a V8, it and is a V8. by every definition. And then if you bought a... A Crofton boat. It comes with a cross of the engine. It sits just up like that. It sits upright, huh? Yeah. How does that oil? What's that? How does that oil? It with it got, sitting it, upright like that? There's the oil. That's the oil pan. It's just there. got an oil pump. Is a lift pump that takes yes. us to the top? Yes. And this is just a Hemi I had up in the barn. Yeah, just a Hemi you had in the barn. Everybody's got three or four of them laying around. Yeah. So what's the setup here on the Siamese twins? These are Buick 215s. This engine has a starter on it. Okay. This engine has no starter. Okay. I start this engine up in the middle here. Now this is back to back, flywheel to flywheel with a clutch disc in the middle. Okay. So I start this engine up, move this lever right here and engages that clutch and starts this engine. Flywheel to flywheel. Well, that one runs one's, one's turning the opposite direction. That engine runs backwards. I gotta tell you, I, I uh, I really like the patina stuff. This this right here, it really just. I am not a body man. I paint some stock cars. You put some paint on, throw some dirt up in there. So this okay. is a four cylinder out of a Hyundai. It's mm -hmm. a front wheel drive engine. I made it rear wheel drive. So you seen my Crosley V8 down there? Right. So this is a four cylinder engine, and this is a four cylinder engine. The crankcase has been cut at a 45 degree angle. So it's a V8, 1946, 2010 Shizuki, 600, four cylinder, four stroke, dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. You said these were these are Crosley uh, 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 carbs? Carbers. They're stock carburetors, Tillisons. So they're the stock ones that would have come on a Crosley. Yeah, Tillison Same, carburetor. Well, they're off of rotor tillers, what they're off of. And then the, the early Indians used Tillisons, which I think would have been side draft. Huh. And you made this. I made it. Just took as, it I took it to the Crosley Nationals. Just as a, I, could, I think I can do this. I kind of fun. I can do this. Man, I love that attitude. One of the things I tell my daughter all the time on our channel is if somebody else can do it, <laughs> there's probably no good reason that we can't learn how to do it. But I'm sitting here today going, there's probably a pretty good reason I can't learn to do that. <laughs> I worked on it for two years. Well, that's, that's incredible, though. Got Chrysler electronic ignition on it. I had the two chains together. These are stock Crosley carburetors. Had to have the manifolds made. And, uh, wow, that's fascinating. And then you got the lineup of of antique stuff here. Kind of, sort of. Am I seeing two Hyundai motors? You do. In that front of that? You oh, do. My goodness. Like so twenty eight Chrysler. Right. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even see the North Star here. North Star. It's a front wheel drive. Of course, I made it rear wheel drive. And that's a 28 Dodge, is that what it says? Man, where are you finding most of these? Because we're in the Midwest I, I here. Had, I've had these for quite a while, but no, most of these were local. They're on, on Marketplace. Really? Yeah, Marketplace. So tell me about the twin engine Hyundai here. 
Hyundai. I put one in. I forgot to put another one in. <laughs> Shoot. I worked at a Hyundai dealership. I hate when you have to do work twice, don't you? <laughs> how does it How does it drive? It's fine. It's fine. Four the harness side. brakes on it. Got a Ford differential on it. Wow. And the headlights and grill only fit a 34 Studebaker only. Guys, I had no idea when I came today what I was walking into. You've probably never seen one of these. A Grand Prix? It is a Grand Prix, but you know what Monte Carlo Aero Coupe is? Oh, yeah. This yeah, this, this was the, what, the mid-80s? What year is this? 80, 86, yeah. So they were doing the same thing for NASCAR. Right. This is plastic. Yep. And, and here's where the trunk opens. It goes all the way up to here. <laughs> And this is this is the hinged opening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, good enough to yeah. slide your uh, slide your guitar in. Yeah. So I made fourteen hundred. It's got thirteen thousand miles on it. Pretty wild. What is this Plymouth uh, satellite converter? Satellite. I had to. I used to raise the stock cars. I put my stock car engine on there. It's a soft top convertible. Yes. Huh? I put new interior in. I put power windows in it, which is pretty rare. Wow. Yeah. It's just a cruiser, four-wheel power disc brakes. Are you, uh, are you leaking? Apparently. Something I just, there? I just put that intake on there. Yeah, that's leaking yeah. right there, huh? Yep. I put four in it, right? You have to, you have to give, you have to give both of those bolts just one or two more ooga doogas with the, yeah. the old el elbow torque. Yep. Just go right, in, right up into the point where your righty-tighty becomes a righty-loosey. <laughs> it's a 1958 it's a Gogo Mobile. That's a made in... Germany. It's got suicide doors on it. Oh, that's cool. I had the seat tree done. If you look up here, that's the original gear shift lever. The little one in the middle. That is correct. It had electric solenoids in the transmission that shifted it. Wow. Does it still shift it? That's, you, it's running and driving? It runs and drives. Not from that. Though. Well, I see the... Here. The header is coming so outside this, here. This is, so, you know me, I like to mess with people's minds. I made it all electric. Really? Yeah. I kind of had to make a subframe here and a regular golf, that's a golf cart transaxle. Yeah, yeah. And a regular golf cart has maybe five horsepower. Yep. That has 40. 392 Hemi. It's all steel. You know Christine the movie? Yeah. Yeah, this is baby Christine. Okay. So the 392 Hemi, uh, the Imperial on the on the valve covers, I'm guessing that's a, a Chrysler Imperial. Two four burners. And the back end is a 50, 57, 55? It's all steel, 57 Fury. 57 Fury. That's a really interesting floor. Yeah. If you drop your change or you spill your soda, don't worry about it. I love engines and transmissions and differentials, as you can see. So. Well... You gotta love something. You might as well love something that'll last, right? Is this an Opal GT? It is. Wow. No, no, that is not a GT. No, it is. I have an Opal GT right here. Okay, going down. Keep on going down. <laughs> and this is the cross that I was telling you about. Right front fender is the same as the left rear fender. Right front, left rear, left rear, right front. Yep. This is the Opal GT. How long, how long have you had that? I've had it all 30 years. I bought it just like this, but there's a title to it. It's the engine sitting right there in the front seat, but that's... These are pretty neat cars for what yeah, they, they are. They're like a little bug eye... Yeah, a car bit, like a, like a mini Al car Alpine bit. sports car. Yeah. Here's my Caterpillar with a Chevy V6 on it. This is a... Uh, Call this thing it's out. a it's a kit car. It is. is it a Bradley? It's not a brick. It's not a Brickland though. This car has never been on the road. It's brand new. Never been on a chassis. I don't know a whole lot about these. Actually, this was given to me. So. What's the story? Oh, is this the Ford you told me that belonged to a friend? It is. I'm just curious. It's got six load wheels. I think it's got five load wheels. 48 or 49. Now it says F1, so that'd be a half ton. F1 would be a half ton, yeah. It says F1. 
These are some of my favorite Ford trucks right here. And then the reason for that is because the hood latch is right there. Got a flathead in there somewhere. Nice. This would be yes. a very, very There's drivable a truck. Over there on that fender, I think, or something. Oh, look at that latch right there. That is just so cool. This is a 69 Coronet convertible, but it's hit hard on the other side. I bought it out of the junkyard, so. Break. I bought this off a of marketplace. His kids were using it as a sandbox. That's why it's all painted like this. He had sand in there. <laughs> Me, he goes, well, you better look at these taillights because these taillights are probably worth about $600 a piece. And they probably are. I don't know. Yeah. And the well, glass. I got the back glass. Kind of art, art deco Suic looking. Suicide doors. That is kind of slick. And you got a Coronet 500 here that's been hit a little hard. You, you're not wrong about that. I'll give them $100 for the junkyard. Chevy Viking. I guess it'd be like a C60. Yeah. Two ton or two and a half ton, I guess you'd say. Yeah, the Viking was like the step up from the Apaches. Is that what it was? Okay. So the Apaches were the one or the half ton through the one ton, if I'm remembering correctly, and I don't always. And then the, the big, like the commercial size trucks that were the one and a half, two ton, two and a half ton, they were all the Viking series. So here's my differential collection. This is full of engines in here. Kind of like our stars. Don't sell yourself short, Jerry. There's quite a few radiators in there too. But now let's run through these fender tags. You're not gonna believe some of the options that are included in this car. It is a true E74 426 V8 Hemi, dual four barrel carburetor, 425 horse motor, three speed 727. Uh, it is a FE5 Rally Red, leather bucket seats, full door panels, the A01 light package, which is ashtray, glove box, trunk light, ignition light, map, courtesy light, instrument, panel light, flood light, all that stuff. Here's where it gets really rare. The A22 option is the elastomeric front and rear bumpers. A lot of cars came with an A21 front elastomeric bumper. This is a rubberized insert, and in this case, it's super rare because it's painted to color matching the right and left hand remote racing mirrors and belt molding. They didn't color match any of the other 1970 early Cudas except in the Rally Red. So super rare option there. It's A A62 Rally instrument cluster, so it's got 150 mile an hour speedo, the TikTok tack, all of your other gauges there. It's a C16 console with wood grain in between the seats. Not super rare, but the C26 overhead console is super, super, super rare. Guys, I, I know several guys who are big Mopar fans. They have owned them, they've driven them, they've raced them, they've restored them. I had one of them tell me recently he's never seen a C26 option in a vehicle in, with his own two eyes. Very rare option here with the door ajar, buzzer, low fuel light, seat belt light, all that stuff up there. This is, a, this is also a California uh, controlled emissions car. So it's got the N95 evaporative emissions control from California, which doesn't make it really that special, but they didn't all come that way. And this car was originally sold in California but it does have the N96 shaker hood package and the N97 noise reduction package. There are only two codes on that second tag, and on the second tag, it's an R35 AM FM stereo and a V6X black longitudinal hemi stripe on the rear quarters. It's an amazing car, guys. I, I, I don't know how many there were that had all those options, I'm really inclined to think that this could be a one of one 70 Hemi Cuda. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Jerry, if you're still watching, thank you for showing this collection to us. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it.